This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so welcome again to the data retrieval training. Uh, so um, we call this section principles because this will be the principles of uh, the data retrieval um, well, uh, option provided by uh, macro uh, software. Um, so in, uh, thank you for attending. Once again, this session is recorded. If you want, if you have any question and you don't want your voice to be recorded, use the chat. Uh, if you have any question I cannot answer now, I will take notes and I will email you uh, later. And then let me know if you want to have a break uh, or at any point, if we need to stop, we will do it and then we'll, uh, we can go back. Uh, to the presentation. Um, I don't know how long this uh, will take because it's the very first time that we are performing this training. Uh, I guess at least two hours could take a bit longer. It depends on your questions. We will see. Um, to attend this training, you must have the data entry training level because uh, we will refer to the uh, macro data structure, macro terminology, and I'm giving for given that you know how macro looks and we don't have to repeat all of uh, uh, that. Uh, but of course, if you have any question, just ask and we will take your question. Um, so, in this presentation, there will be an introduction to the export capabilities by macro, um, which are homepage reports and data reporter too. And following, there will be a, a small data reporter tool demonstration. You can find lots of information in the macro for help, which is the help. Uh, index in the macro web interface. I will show you that when we go to macro. But first, I think we need a quick recap of macro data structure and macro terminology. So the following were comments by Elsevier. So it's the way Elsevier defined uh, uh, macro. So macro is an electronic data capture solution to collect and manage clinical data. Oh, before then we go, um, so um, I forgot to tell you that after the training, we will uh, issue the certificates and we will send you an email with them uh, and with a few links and I will circulate these slides if you want to. Um, so uh, also this uh, video will be available on the uh, EBNT uh, web page, if I'm not wrong, uh, Asterius, is that right? We, yes, we eventually we might need to edit yeah. it first, so it might take us a yeah. while, but uh, the idea yeah. is to put it there, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, no macro welcome. is an electronic, so yes, going back to the slide. MAC is an electronic data capture solution to collect and manage clinical data. Uh, I would add here, Macro was born as a data capture solution mainly for clinical trials. And for this reason, it has a lot of words that reminds clinical trials. So when we say study, you don't have to think at uh, studies in clinical trials, but this is the word that Macro have uh, because it was uh, it was born for clinical trials, so just do not get confused. Because the study uh, is the structure of the data in macro. In particular, the structure of the data in macro is defined by study definition, and this is a container for all information to be collected uh, for each subject. Then, within the study definition the data collection is organized in visit 
and uh, which can either represent individual patient interactions points or sets of data they are collected contemporaneously. Within this visit, data collection is conducted on e-forms. So the e-forms are a set of questions that are grouped together to be displayed on the same page. So each of these elements, visit, e-forms and question, can be set to collect multiple repeats of the same data, which we call cycles. Don't worry, we will go back to all of these concepts in a minute. So to summarize, study definition contains one or more visits, a visit contains one or more form, an e-form contains one or more uh, question, and any of these elements can be repeated in multiple sets of data. And these are cycles. So to explain this a bit better, um, so I designed this graph, I hope this helped. So you can see here data items question. So the data item question are sitting inside the e-form. The e-form, a group of e-form, correspond to a visit. Then of course, all of those can cycle. Then the group of visit, is organized in the EBNT structure of the data in blocks. So what do I mean when I say some e-form, for example, or visit can repeat? So um, for example, the follow-up visit. So you will have follow-up one and then after one year another follow-up. So the same visit will repeat with cycle and it will become follow-up two. Um, an e-form uh, can cycle two, and a question. So for example, the question, the repeating question are, for example, what we have as a list of drugs. Um, so the current structure of uh, macro is something like what you see here on the top. So you've got six blocks plus, let's say, one, which is, we can call it block zero because it doesn't repeat, and it's the registration. So the registration is the only one that doesn't repeat. Then you have these six blocks. So a new block is generated with, when a new main clinical event, not related to the previous one, is recorded. So let's say you have a first main diagnosis with a, a, tra a transplant and then the patient develop an, a new diagnosis and therefore have a new transplant to the new for the main new diagnosis. So the second block will be generated. Um, therefore, the information for the second main diagnosis and second transplant will be collected in the second block. And therefore, any follow-up related to the transplant will be collected in the follow-up uh, two. And therefore, we will have follow-up to first year, follow-up to second year, and so on. So each block contains a set of visits. Any of these visits contain a set of e-form. The e-form have questions that are grouped together to be displayed on the same page. And questions are the single data items collected in the visit, in the e-form, sorry. Visit, e-form, question can repeat, and multiple sets of data can be collected. And those are cycles. I hope this is clear. <laughs> so, uh, if you have any question, please um, just ask. But we will go back on this later. This is important to understand uh, what we will explain later. A bit more on macro terminology. So, we explain uh, study, visit, e form, question. So data items. Data items are the question or item in the e-form. Then uh, data code and value code. So the data code is the code of the data item, so the code of the question. Then you have category questions, which are the type of question with a predefined pre uh, predefine list of possible responses. 
uh, such as uh, the main diagnosis, for example. In this type of question, each of the options in the category has a unique code, and this code is called value code. And therefore, the value code is the code corresponding to a specific unique response value in a category question. Then the response value, so the actual value corresponding to that value code, it is called the response value. So it's the value of the response in any type of question in general. And in category question, it's the value of uh, corresponding to a specific code. So uh, then subject. So again, uh, because this is a clinical, it was a clinical trial uh, database at the very beginning, it refers to in general subject uh, to say the subject in the database. Then for us, when we talk about the registry as the main database, the subject will correspond to the patient. Eventually, in the future, we will have the donor registry database and the membership uh, database. Therefore, when we will refer to the donor registry database, the subject will be the donor in that case. So the subject is the subject in the database. Then subject label is a unique label that is automatically assigned by macro to each of the new registered subject. So or in the case of the main database, this happens only after registration. It's quite important the subject label because uh, it doesn't refer to any uh, patient information detail. Um, so you can use this uh, in emails and is uh, safe to use. And it's unique again across the whole database. Then site. Macro refer to site in the same way it refers to center. So sometimes you will, uh, you will find site, sometimes you will find center. But anyway, those two refer to what we call in macro center identification code. So, sorry, in Promise, so CSC. However, in Promise, the CSC had some digits. In Macro, it has a format which is C plus four digits. So, when for uh, a CSC in Promise, like one, two, three, in Macro, it will be C, zero, one, two, three. Then, subject group. The subject group is a group of subjects defined by specific characteristics. For example, we will have subject group for specific working parties group. Um, therefore, uh, the, the subjects are by default grouped in macro by site. So when you register the subject in a specific site, it will be under that site. But also subject can be grouped under subject group. So this again will be useful in later um, in my presentation. Do you have any question at this level? It looks like there's not there's not questions. Okay, so we can. I'm sorry because I, I understand it's a lot to take in one go, but I think it was important to have a quick recap before then we go to the explanations. So, <clears throat> okay. So export capabilities by macro. Um, as I said before, we have homepage reports and data reporter too. So these are the two capabilities at the moment provided by Macro. So for the homepage report, EBNT will set up a number of report links on the homepage for quick access to specific data reports. While the data reporter tool is an actual tool, so it's a tool to build, share and schedule and export simple or complex data searches. 
you can view and or download the data search results as columnar, frequency or cross tabular reports. It provides a more flexible way to search and for an export data uh, and for export data directly from macro uh, web interface. So I, uh, I've alerted the word data searches because I will use this word as a white word to define a search to build a data report to export, but also a simple data search to find data in the database. So the data reporter tool can be used for both if you want to build a data uh, report for export or if you want to look for something in the database. So first we will describe the homepage report. So the homepage report will be, uh, well, I will go a bit quicker on that because it's literally a link to click on the homepage. So there, there is a lot to say uh, about this. So uh, the homepage um, is the page that is displayed on the login to Macro. You can also access it by clicking the home icon and it displays messages and link to reports and files. Then to access a homepage report, you just uh, click on the relevant link and then reports or file will be opened in a separate window with option for printing and exporting. So to show you that. So after that, we log in in macro. I will use this, okay. This is the home page that you will see. So here, there are some examples of reports that uh, my colleague Tunde kindly uploaded for us for this training. But these are just sample, of course. And then uh, there will be some messages and some other uh, link useful link for example here you've got the dictionary of the database which can be quite useful so to let's say we want to export the transplant by center report just click on that and this is the preview so uh, the preview and uh, it's not always showing all the results of uh, available. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Tunde. Um, yeah, let me just, um, the point, yes. can you hear me? Yes, we can, yes. Yeah, what is happening is because of the way the interface, presentation interface is, um, there's a bit of uh, restriction on how much information you can cram into the view. So it is at the discretion of the person creating the report to specify the important field or question that needs to be uh, available in a particular report. Uh, it's not that you cannot have more than the number of columns you ha or headers you have there, you can have more, but it's often uh, better to keep to the important uh, fields for a particular subject for the mm -hmm. report. Okay, thank you. Then from here, so you can see that there are different options, the option to print out the report, the option to save the report, and you can select all of these formats. And then the option to save with a preview. Sorry, because, okay. So you can see that as a preview and then you can just download that or print that out. So let's say I want to save it in XLS format. I will just save it. Oh yes, I have it already. That's fine. Well, the protect view is something, um, yes, it depends on the uh, Excel that you're using, I guess. 
but anyway so you see that's the uh, report in the excel file so these are customized reports um we will um eventually uh, load some uh, uh, customized report and of course because they are customized and they are built using sql statements so they are quite flexible uh, for example we can change the name of the columns uh, and we can decide what columns to add but of course uh, it will be uh, our zbnt london office to build these reports uh, and this feature is not available for users so for the user you would just see the reports to export so any question at this point oh, um, i just want to add a quick comment um, yeah. for everybody the the main uh, purpose of the homepage report is to take a uh, very uh, complex reports from from within the data set that will normally be challenging for individual users to produce and put a set of those questions i mean those reports on the home page so that users can download them and then analyze them as required the layout is quite flexible this one has been designed to look like a report you you print out from an application like uh, access or excel but it's, it's not limited to this presentation it can be presented just as a column and rows and you can just download them as a, a set file and, and analyze them so it's, it's a bit flexible but it's meant to handle complex reports that would not normally be possible to do with the next phase that Sylvia will be introducing to us. So you have a select number of very, very important and useful reports that will be published to the homepage for the convenience of the users. Okay, thank you, Tunde. Any question? Okay, so I'm gonna close this. Okay, so going back to the presentation. Okay, so the report uh, will have a column uh, in for uh, each unique combination of visit e form question available in the database. So this means that every time there are new data is entered and therefore a new combination visit if from question is generated this will be automatically added to the a new a new column in the report so the full number of export is used for every subject so even even if some data is not available for all columns for all subjects some of the export formats available are SPSS and C, um, CSV. Again, this is still ongoing, so we will still uh, have we still have to define the homepage reports a bit better um, and decide what to upload. So um, it's just an, an introduction to what we will have in the future. Uh, however, you have uh, in the uh, training uh, environment, you have access to these two reports that uh, Tunde uploaded for us, if you want to have a look. So, any question about the homepage report before that we go to the data reporter tool? Okay. So the data reporter tool, I will show you that in macro. So unfortunately, um, I will have to use a database with real data to have a report that makes sense. But of course, I will not show you any personal uh, detail of any patient. So. To access to the uh, data reporter tool, you can either click this icon here or go to view, 
data report. So this is the data report tool. What you see here is my previous activities. So like um, I've um, um, completed some of these reports that are now available for view and download. Some of them were cancelled. Uh, and you can see that here. For one of them, I had an error. Then when you click new search is to create a new search, so a new data search. And you will see these four squares, columns, data filter, subject and subject filter. We will go into detail about all of them, so do not worry. So I just wanted to show you this before then we go back to the slides. So you can create a new search, clicking on new search, and then you will select each of these items to build your report. So in concept, what I recommend is first to identify a clear question that you expect your data search to answer. This is quite important because when you build a report using the data reporter tool, you really need to know what you expect to see from the data reporter. So uh, the more detail you know, the easier it will be to build a data report in the data, a data search in general in using the data reporter tool. So that's why I recommend to have a clear question uh, that you want to expect your data search to answer. So a clear aim for your data search. In the example that we will use to build a, a data report, um, the question will be, what is the total number of HACT for subject that had plasma cell disorder as a main diagnosis for the first HACT? and that were male patients registered at any center. So this is the question that I want to answer with my data search. Then the second step that I recommend, of course, this is these are just my recommendation, then when you get familiar with the tool, I'm sure you will get your own way to use it. But these are my recommendations. So as a second step, I recommend to design, design the data search in a way that you know what to expect uh, your data search uh, will answer. So you have to select the object and the subject of your search and then filter the object and filter the subject of your search. So you do that using columns to select the object, subject to select the subject, and data filter to filter the object and subject filter to filter the subject. So these column subject, data filter and subject filter are those four squares that I just showed you. So in other words, the columns will answer to the question what. So you select the column uh, in a way that you select the data item that you expect to see on your data search, meaning the actual column of your report. Then you, you can use the data filter to filter the result of your search. Then you select, you decide the subject that you want to see. And of course, that depends on this, what you have permission to access to. So only study center subjects that you uh, have, and sorry, and subject group that you have permission to access to will be displayed. But let's say you can access to more than one center, but you want to see only uh, the, um, the result from one of the center, you can select one, uh, the center that you want to see the results from. Then the filter, the subject filter is another filter to, res, uh, to filter the result of the data search. I will refine a bit better what is the difference between data filter and subject filter in a few slides. 
Uh, Sylvia, sorry to interrupt. Uh, there is a question yeah. for you in the chat. If you can have a look, please. Can you see transfer from another center? No. You can only see study center and subject that you have access, so permission to access to. So if you know that you, you need to access to another uh, patient that had a transplant in another center, you will have to ask the permission. We still have to work out how uh, this will work in details, but um, not. In theory, not. You will not see uh, any other subject for any other center. You will see only the subject that you have access to. Uh, Did I answer can I, your question? Yes. Yeah. Can I add something here? That it, it could sure, be. Please. There's <clears> always <throat> a case that uh, you can have access already. I suppose that would appear in the report, right? Uh, for cases that a patient received a transplant in another center and then uh, it came to your center and you yeah. contacted the help desk and you got access to the record, then this record would appear, even though they are from another center originally, right? Yeah, because you have access to it, yes. Yeah, okay. So only when you have access to them. Yeah, regardless what center they come from, you have to have the permission to get access to them. And this is a level of subject centers and subject group. So for example, if you have the permission to access a subject group, you will see this, uh, the patients in that subject group, regardless what center they come from. Does it make sense, this? Asterius, is it a better explanation? Oh, yeah, 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 I think so. Uh, but it's for uh, Simone to to say, I think. Uh, okay. It's clear yes. enough. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, going back to our question. So, the first picture that you see here on the top is coming from the macro for help. Um, so the, you can see the four squares that you see in the uh, data reporter tool, which are columns, data filter, subject, and subject filter. So in the example from the in from the uh, macro for help is saying, show me columns or e forms from the screening visit, data filter occurring after this date, subject for subject at a specific site, London, and subject filter who were treated by a specific doctor. So, um, so the concept is that the column answer to what, the data filter answer to refine what, subject answer to who, and subject filter refine who. So in our example, we said, uh, what is the total number of HACT? So what is the total number of HACT? Of course, we will add all the columns too, but that is the main one that we want to see in our report. Then refine what? What is uh, the subject that had plasma cell disorder as a main diagnosis for the first HACT? So main diagnosis for the first HACT has to be plasma cell disorder. That's the filter, the data filter in our example then I'm happy to see any uh, patient that I have access to. So register any center that I have access to. And I want to see only male patients. So in the refined hall. Oh, sorry. So at this stage, I would like to show you um, an example of how I would design what I just told you on paper. So on here, I basically reproduce what you have in macro, columns, data filter, subject and subject filter with exact identical question that we will see in a minute when we open these four squares. And I've already collected all details of what I want to see in my data search. So I found this way to um, design uh, the uh, report useful because uh, you have everything written down. You, uh, so you can, you got a visual way to understand what you expect this uh, report to answer. 
also um, it's important to specify uh, the visit and the cycles, e-form and cycles, and therefore you can uh, design, pre-design that here. Um, it's useful to have it as a documentation or two. Um, and for all of these reasons, I think uh, something similar to this would be useful to have. Of course, again, uh, this is absolutely up to you. When you will start using the data reporter, you will find your own way to use it, of course. But I will show you how useful it is when we will start uh, building uh, this, uh, this report. So th this is what I mean as design. But we will go back on this in a minute. So going back to the presentation. A few tips. When you design, make sure you select and add to the design the correct expected item, which are the columns that you want to see in your data report. Take cycles and blocks into account when designing because you need to know exactly what you are looking for and where this is located. And on that, it can really help having the CRF and also the uh, dictionary from the database and you can um, download both of them from the home page again. Remember to narrow your data search using the filtering by attribute and or data response and we will go that in a minute and you can also add all or any of the condition expected. So we will go that in a minute too. And again, only study center, subject group, subject that you have permission to access to are displayed. And I just showed you the example design in Excel sheet. Now, because in my example, I'm using the summary navigation form, I will first show you what the summary navigation form is, and then we will go back finally to the data reporter tool to build our um, report. So, sorry, because I have to jump between one and another database because I don't, I cannot show you any real patient. So the, uh, that's the one, yeah. Okay. So I'm showing you, I'm showing you this form because I understand during the data entry training you, you went a bit um, quick on this form, even because it could be that it's not finalized yet. But it will be very useful in building uh, the uh, our report. That's why I will show you this. So the summary navigation form is one of the form in the registration uh, visit. And as I said, the registration visit is the only one that it doesn't repeat itself. So it will be just in one place. And so the summary navigation form, you don't have any cycle for summary navigation form. You, so when, if you use this to build your report, you will not have to worry about specifying cycles or repeat. Then it's very useful because it's got calculated field. So you cannot enter data in this form. So these, these fields are derived fields from all the fields that you uh, entered in somewhere else in the database. And some of them are calculation. For example, number of HACT registered is the total number of HACT for this patient and all the things. So in our case, we will use the number of HACT registered. So that's why I wanted to show you the summary navigation form, just to give you an idea of where this is coming from. So, going, any question about that? Okay. So, we are now ready to start building on step three, uh, three sorry, uh, to start building our data search. Of course, remember to save and uh, schedule if it is needed. I will explain you what schedule means in a second. So we can get to the data reporter tool. 
Okay. So I click here this time. When you start a new search from the scratch, you always have to remember to click new search first and then select the study. In this case, the study is just RD. So of course, this list will depend on what you have permission to access to. Access to. But in the future, the idea is that you will have also RD stand for registry database, but you could have also donor database and membership database so that you can use this tool for any database that you have access to. So this is still ongoing. Um, I didn't uh, mention this before. So uh, please note th the actual tool is, is not finalized, it's not a finalized product. So there are lots of lots little small parts of the tool that are still under development. Um, so it could be that some some of the things that I'm showing you now will disappear, or it could be that you will have something different at the end. But at the moment, every time you have to select RD, otherwise it won't allow you to start uh, with the, your data search. I always recommend to start from uh, left and go to right. So start from column, then data filter, then subject, and then subject filter. Then I would also recommend to build a report having your design on the site because that will be quite useful. And I will show you why in a second. Sorry, normally I have two screens, but I have to squeeze everything in one. It's not helping me. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so we are in columns. So I click columns. You see what you have in columns is what I wrote in, in the uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet. So um, on this square, you can select e, uh, visit, e-form and questions. And then for each of those, you can select the cycle. Also, there are predefined columns that you can add which could be the study name, which in our case will be RD, so the registry database, site code, uh, which uh, correspond to the uh, CIC in Promise, as I explained you before, subject label and person ID, which is the an ID uh, assigned in macro. Uh, well, I won't go in detail in that. I guess it was explained. Uh, during the data entry training. I, I mean, I know it was explained during the data entry training. So in this example, because I, I don't want to show any personal data information, I will only click study name and subject label. Then um, I know that the visit that I want to look for is the diagnosis number one, because we want to see the first main diagnosis for the first transplant. So if it was the second, I would have to look for diagnosis two, for example, the second main diagnosis. So uh, I can either open the drop down list and then uh, untick all visits and then tick what I want to look for. Otherwise, every time that you finish clicking or uh, selecting what you want to select to um, select uh, what uh, is expected you have to click outside the window so outside the drop down list in any point like that uh, this is a bit annoying it could be that uh, it will be improved in future versions another way to select what you expect to see is also for example start typing so if you start typing, you see the answer and then you select what you want to see. And again, click outside. In our case, we want to select cycle number one only. But you see you got as operators, uh, 
equal, greater, minor, minimum, and max. So you, you, this is quite flexible. For example, you can say the maximum cycle of something in a specific visit. So for example, the maximum follow-up cycle available in a specific visit. So in this case, we will say equal to one. We'll, we will keep it very simple. If, um, again, I'll, I'll start. First of all, I always have to remember to untick all and then start typing, for example. So I know that the visit, the, uh, sorry, the e-form that I want to select is primary diagnosis one to six. So I tick that, click outside, cycle equal to one again. And I know that from my design here, and I also know already the question code and the question description, so the question name. So I can either start typing the question code here and it will come up, but I can also start typing the name of the question and it will come up equally. So and click, click on the side. I don't care about the cycle for this question because it doesn't cycle. And I have to remember to click Add. You will see here the summary of what you've just added. So in the way you add it. So I added diagnosis one, cycle one, primary diagnosis one to six, cycle, uh, to six, cycle one, primary disease diagnosis. Okay. Then going to the next. Uh, question that I want to add. So in this case, we are on the registration visit that is happening only one in the database. So you don't have to specify what uh, visit you want to look uh, at. So I can leave all visits selected here in this case, and I will specify the EFU. So subject in my case is subject personal details so we'll click that i don't mind about the cycles because this is not cycling and then the question i can also just scroll down and check all questions that are available on the e-form just doing that so of course if i don't select any visit or any e-form then here in this drop down list, I will see all questions available in all the database. So this list will become very, very long. So in our case, what we want to see is fact sets, which is this question here. So I click outside and then I press add. Now in the summary, uh, you can see that uh what you see here is all visit not registration visit because this summarizes exactly what i did i left all visit therefore i see all visit if i had selected registration here i would have seen registration um, this is just to say that what you will see here is just the summary of what you did in this site so just the summary of what you selected here the good thing is that you can Click on that and remove it if you don't want to see it anymore. The bad thing is that if you want to change some detail from a pre-existing um, line that you added in, uh, before, you cannot edit it. So you can only remove it and add a new one. And that will be the same for the data filter. So going to the next question that we want to add is the age group. In this case, I will leave all visit, all, all e-forms and just select the question that I want to see. So untick all question and select age group. And again, I can do that because this is located in one place only. If, I, if a question is located in more places and I don't specify where I want to see that from, I will end up with the data report with all columns for uh, all where the, the item is 
uh, available. So that's why it's important to be specific. And uh, so you can see in this summary this time, you see all visits, all ifums, because that's why I left. I didn't specify visit, I didn't specify ifum, and I just specified the question. Then I, I will still add the third question this time. I will select again the um, just the visit. I will leave all ifums. Uh, of course, when you select a visit, then you will see the eform only available in that visit, not all eforms as all eforms available in the database. So uh, I leave that like that. But once again, when you leave all eform, everything is selected. So if the item is in multiple places, you will end up with columns for each of these places. Then in my case, the question is HSCT. Um, type underscore D. So I'll untick any other question, and that's the question that I want to. Oh no, sorry, it's count, not type. So there we go, that's the one. Number of HCT done. Add. So in this case, you've got registration, summary navigation, and number of HCT done. So everything as I specified in the list. Uh, so the last question, HCT type. So this question, uh, I want to see in my report all the HCT types for all the HCT that happen for all patients. So I will select all six blocks of pre-HSCT um, visit, which is the visit where the HSCT type is collected. And therefore, I will select one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can see here, six visits checked. So six visits selected. Then on these six visits, I want to select the main treatment selection and the question HACT type. So I will start typing HACT type, and that's the question. Add. So now see the question is in six different places. So you see here the six different places where the question is available because I wanted to see all of them. So if there isn't any data available for any of the patients that are selected, you will not see that column. However, even if only one patient had that type, for example, in HSCT, uh, in pre-HSCT 6, you will see the six columns for all subjects. Is that clear? Oh, there is another question. I, I was about Joanna. to say, Sylvia, yes, thank you. Yeah. May I ask you uh, who choose age group? Although your question did you specify any age? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So, um, oh, I ask. I th I think I do understand the question. Yes, yes, it's a good question. Okay, so the filter uh, that I'm interested in are just about uh, the sex and the primary diagnosis. But what I wanted to show you is that you can add all the columns to, to the report. In my report, I want to see the age group too as a data that I want to see. But the main question that I want to answer is the HACT type. So I make sure that I have the HACT type but I also am interested in seeing the age group. So that's why I added the age group. Of course, this is flexible. So you can uh, um, add, delete columns as you prefer. It was just to show you that you can have more than one um, columns regardless the filter that you want to apply. Did I answer to your question, Joanna? Uh, can okay. I? Thank ah, you, okay. Yuan. Yes, please. Yes. No, no, no. Okay. If, if Yuan is okay. happy, yeah. Okay. 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 
So I will press OK. Thank you, Joanna. Well, in reality, uh, age group is there because the very first um, uh, design uh, that I did, it was with two fields, with the primary diagnosis and age group odors. Then I forgot to remove it, to be honest, <laughs> the age group, because I decided to leave one filter only. But still, it's useful to know that you can add any column you want to the uh, your data search. So, OK. So now I'm done. You can see here. Thank you, Joanna. You can see here all all um, the items that I want to see in my uh, data uh, search, and I press OK. You see here there is a summary of what we just added. So it's useful if you want to double check that uh, everything that you want is available here. Then go into the data field then. So it's what correspond to this little section here. So on the data filter, I will just put this a bit up. You have filter by attribute and filter by data response. So the filter by attribute is what uh, Macro calls as attribute of the question that could be the status of the question. This was explained uh, in uh, the data entry training. Um, and then uh, all the type of attributes. I will not go into many details here, because again, this could be that will be different uh, in the end product. But the important thing is that every time that you build a search, you select a status either all of them or a specific one. I would recommend all of them if you don't want to miss any data. This is quite important because if you don't select the status, you will see no results in your uh, data search. So the status is essential. In fact, I wrote here mandatory. So also, it's not enough that you tick here. You have to also remember to add it. So click Add there and you will see in this window the summary of what you just added so in this case all status for the question then of course if you add more filter then you will have the option to say uh, I want the result to match all of this condition or any of this condition and with all it means like and 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 uh, all of the conditions and any means or, so one condition or another. So I think it's more useful the filter by data response, but this is important because if you don't click here and add, you will see no result in your um, data search. So the filter by data response. The principle is quite similar. You select the visit, select the uh, eform, and select the question, or you can directly select the question in, with the same principle as I just explained to you. Uh, the difference here that you don't have to untick or tick what you want to see. You just select and then click outside. Then again, you have the cycles, so you can decide you want to filter under a specific cycle. And the other thing is you can filter the data uh, using a question that is not necessarily one of your columns, selected columns. So for example, let's say I didn't have the sex in my columns, but I wanted to filter by sex, saying I want to see only male patients. I could select that here, uh, and the filter would apply, even though I don't see that in my columns. So the filter that I want to apply here is this. So in the VC diagnosis one, cycle equal one. If um, we said primary diagnosis, oh, once again, you can start typing to primary diagnosis one to six cycle equal to one 
and then question in my case the question is primary diagnosis again i can start typing the question name or the question code equally and then select now the operators that you see here depends on what type of question you are select you have selected in this case uh is a, a, a question that have well it's a category question and we will say contains but you can say begin with and uh equal to depending on what you want the problem here is that because you don't um see uh, the actual available options that you have from for example this category question it's quite easy that you can make a misspell in your uh, text when you are you entering contains for example a text or equal to a text unfortunately if you do make a mistake then the filter will not work so you have to make sure you write uh the the filter in uh, without mis uh, misspelling the word that you want to use to filter of course the uh, what you can use to help you uh, on that is the dictionary where you can see the uh exact uh word uh, of the uh, response value for that category question in our case we will use contains and I want to fill the plasma cell disorder. So I will just write contains cell because I know that only one option contains the word cell. And press add. If I select a question that is a number, then the operator will be, uh, let me see if I have um, a number. I could have number of HCT, for example therefore the operator will be uh, equal uh, greater let's see number no nope. so i've noticed that yesterday too basically right now it's showing me the questions that are only available in the primary diagnosis form even though here is nothing is selected so this is a bug of the system again it's not uh, working uh, still um, uh, in, as we expect uh, the, the final system to work. So you have to be patient, I'm sorry. So, but just to say that, oh yeah. So these are the other option when e, the question that you are selecting is a number. So you can select uh, the operators. So, one important thing to say is that when you filter here you have to use the response value so for a question like the primary diagnosis that we use here you cannot enter the code corresponding to the disease that you wanted to use as a filter but you can only enter the actual name of the question unfortunately so at the moment we have filter only on response value not on code value <clears throat> I hope you now understand the difference between code and response value. <clears throat> so you will not be able at this stage to filter using the code value, but only the response value, uh, which is another limit uh, that we know, but uh, this is the way it is at the moment. And once again, if you have more than one condition, you can say all or any. So for example, if I added another condition here and I press all, it means that the filter are this and another filter. If I press any, it means that the filter is this or another filter. For this um, demonstration, I will leave only one filter. So I press okay. So it, it, because it's only one filter, it doesn't matter if it's any or all. And again, you can see the summary of what we selected in this window. Is everything clear till now? Can I go to the subject? Any question? It looks like it's clear, okay. So, <clears throat> subject. So this window, I think is a bit limited too, because at the moment you can only select all sites that are visible to you or one site 
you cannot select multiple sites specifying which one you want. So either all or a specific one. So I will leave all sites. Same for subject group. Well, we don't have any subject group available at the moment, so you don't see anything. And same for subject, you can only select, for example, you want to see what we set now for a specific patient that you know the label. So you will click here and write the label. In this case, we want to see everything. And ID ranges. Well, this is not very useful at the moment because the ID should be assigned by macro um, in a sequential way, but uh, in the migration, the ID correspond to the IDDA in PROMIS. I don't want to confuse too much, but they are not sequential essentially. So at the moment, we will just leave all sites, all subject group and add. And then finally, subject filter. So the subject filter at the moment looks very similar to the filter by data response in the data filter. And that could be a bit confusing. And that's why I asked uh, Elsevier to provide me with a better explanation to describe the difference between the data filter and the subject filter. And I will show you that slide in a minute. So in our case, we are here now. So I said all oh, subjects, I did that already. The filter in the subject filter that I want to apply is age. Oh, well, I'm using that age group adult. <laughs> I thought I was using sex anyway. Maybe in the question I was using sex and here I forgot to change it. Yes, yes, sorry. So I will use the sex instead of the age group. Okay, so sex. So I want to show you, first of all, I'm typing the question directly because once again, this question is located in one place only, so I don't have the problem of uh, having to specify where the question that I want to use as a filter have to be. The other thing that I would like to show you is that you can see that in sex, you've got uh, basically, let's say three questions. Uh, not, do, do not look at the first one. So the first one is part sex, so is the uh, is the sex of the patient. Then you got the donor sex, and then you got part sex underscore D. So the difference between these two is that this is not is a derived question. So it's a question that is filled in automatically when uh, you enter the uh, sex in patient sex. And this is the question that is in the summary navigation form in this case. But that's why sometimes you will see the question and then the same question underscore D. And the underscore D means that that question exists as itself and exists as a derived question somewhere else, where the derived one is automatically filled in after that you filled the direct question. I would recommend unless you want to use a derived calculated question as, for example, the number of HCT as we did in the columns. Otherwise, it's better to use the direct question. So in this case, sex, not underscore D. Then we said that we want that to be equal. Male, sorry, male, add. So same thing here, let's say I wanted to uh, add the age, age group two as another filter. So I would say age group equal to adult and then add. Sorry, when you, uh, here you have to type your answer. I have this because I typed that before. So it, it kind of, uh, remember the answer that you typed it before but in general you have to type your answer and you see here i've got the two condition if i want uh, my result to be male and adult i will have to select all if i want my result to be either male or adult i will uh, tick find result that match any of these conditions in my case i'm just interested about male patients so i will remove 
the second condition and press OK. So once again, you see that here in the summary, so you see all visits or if from patient sex equal male, and you can see that this summary correspond to, well, sorry about that, but correspond to the design that we decided before. Now, it's time to save our search. So, uh, of course, you can preview the search, but I would recommend at this stage to save first because the system can crash and then uh, you will lose what you've got here. So we'll first save the search. So when you save the search, the study is automatically filled in because you selected it at the beginning. Then again, I found this useful because I have all the information. I have already the report name that I want to use. I have already the description that I want to use. And I also have already the keywords that I want to use. So I'll just copy and paste that here. So why description and keywords are important? Description is very useful because when you look for a search that you built in the past, you will see in the preview, and I will show you that in a minute, the description. So if the title doesn't explain that much, you can see the description to understand what that search was about. The keywords are essential, I would say, because when you load the search and you want to look for a specific report, you can use keywords, and these keywords are what you save here. So if you don't save anything here, you will not be able to find this search by, for example, typing HSET. Then the sharing options. So this depends on what you uh, will be allowed to. So as default, you will be, uh, it will be possible for everybody to save their own search as private so that they can only see their own search. It's possible that you will be able to save your search in the subject group. So everyone, oh, could you explain how would you export age and diagnosis? transplants uh okay so sandra I, I will uh after that i finished uh this i will i will uh, go back to your uh, question if you don't mind okay okay thank you sandra so um sharing options uh, i was saying um then if you have uh, the possibility to save uh, as a subject group that means that uh, the um, data search that you saved will be available for all subject groups so everyone that have access to that subject group will see your data search when loading a data search then site again is uh, to share with the specific site that you have access to so that you have permission to see again um, so of course when you select the subject or site you then select what site you want to share this with and at the moment you can only select one single site at time in this case we will save our search as private then this site is to uh, choose if you want to schedule the search to happen uh, in some specific time. So this means when, when you download a search uh, or when you view a search, that is like a picture of the data in the moment that the search was run. So if you scheduled your search, for example, weekly, and you say a specific date and time, then you will see the data when you go to download that search at that corresponded to that time uh, of uh, that was scheduled. And same for monthly, yearly. This is, for example, if you know that you have to uh, like download a report every month about something specifically, 
you can schedule it in a way that every month it will run and then when you open it you will see the, the report run here and you can just download it or uh, view it by default uh, this will stay uh, available for 30 days however you can add more days uh, to for the your result to be available in the queue uh, on here then okay no question then this little tick box is quite important because if you for example you are building your search you want to save but you're not sure if it's finalized then maybe you want to go to preview then I recommend to untick that because these tick uh, add the search directly to the queue so the actual uh, um, report start uh, running and therefore if you start running the, the report uh, more than one report after uh, a time definitely the system will crash so it's better to untick this just for now and then when you are definitely ready if you want to run the report, you will just click run. So I would unclick that and save. So now we will see the preview of what we did. So in this case, I can see only one single result. Uh, so interesting to say is that what you can see here as a name of column correspond to coding of the visit so the visit code and the cycle the form code and the cycle and then the question code so uh, in in our case we said that we wanted to see only the very first primary diagnosis in so uh, diagnosis one cycle one and form uh, primary diagnosis one to six cycle one and that's the question code but we selected all i show you here we selected all the pre-HACT available so HACT available at any time uh, uh, of the life of the patient HACT type so therefore this patient had two HACT and therefore he had one pre-HACT one and one pre-HACT two so here you can see both of them because we selected all of them but you don't see six of them because you don't have data in six of them so you see only uh, the columns where you have some data available so in this case you see uh, this is um, the pre-HACT1 cycle 1 main treatment selection 1 and that's the question and that's the answer. Then for the pre-HACT 2, cycle 1, then uh, main treatment selection 1, and that's the question, HACT type. Is this clear? That's just a preview, by the way. Okay. So the other thing is after that you save your search, you will see the search name here, HACT underscore uh, PCD and then when was last modified so just now then now we want to go back to the queue so to this view and run the search because we are sure that this is what we expected so see when we run a search the status is queued at the beginning but then you have to keep pressing refresh until it comes as progressing so this is another thing that hopefully will be different in progress see it will be different in the future so um the interesting thing is that you can while it's in progress you can do other things for so for example uh, i go here and then i go back there so see it's still in progress uh, however don't recommend to start uh, building too many search while you have too many search in progress and that's why we have to untick 
that are to queued before because um, too many processes together will definitely crush the system. And then I have, uh, once again, you have to keep refreshing until then you get to complete and then you can either view or download what you got. Uh, well, here you see the date of last activity. So if it is a, a scheduled one, you will see the date when that was scheduled and therefore when that was run. And then the days left in the queue, if you specify the days, you will see them there. So if you say, I want to see this for 10 days, you will see the days left uh, in the queues here. Then, um, I've got one uh, data search that I performed in the, before, so I will show you the view of this, this data search just because in the meantime that uh, this progress. So you can view the data search as columnar frequency or cross tab and download the data search uh, with these three formats. So let's go to the view columnar sorry if it's a bit slow okay the interesting things of the view is that you can see the total number of results here which could be quite useful also you can filter inside the view so i would write mail and filter yesterday this wasn't working i don't know if it will work today I'm sorry because it's not that stable still. No, it's not working. Great. In theory, it should work. Then you see all the results. So one interesting thing. Um, so uh, you see here, uh, I didn't specify the diagnosis where it should have been located. So you can see diagnosis one and diagnosis two sorry diagnosis one again but cycle two so you've got two cycles of the vc diagnosis in this case and this is because even just one single patient of those patients have some data here see so you will see another column and that's the same for all other items that's why uh, it's quite important that either you select exactly what you want to see or uh, you expect to see lots of columns for all data available, uh, especially if you are uh, exporting uh, a large group of patients. Uh, and of course, uh, automatically it gives you the different cycles in the same block. But if you want to see over blocks too, like in this case for the pre HACT visit, you have to specify pre HACT 1, pre HACT 2, pre HACT 3, and then inside that you will see the different cycles for each of the uh, visit. Does it make sense what I said now? So, for example, if you had uh, this one, cycle 1, and then cycle 2, it would be pre HCT 1 cycle 1, then another column, pre HCT 1 cycle 2, then pre HCT 2 cycle 1, and so on. So this is the columnar preview. Going back to the queue, you can also have, um, so frequency, um, and so for example, Oh, sorry, I selected the wrong one because that doesn't have any data available. So the number six. You see the search name here, by the way. So for example, I want to see uh, the frequency by age. And you see here, you've got the frequency. So you've got the question code, uh, then the value code in this case and response value and then the response frequency the percentage and the total total subject then going back there 
I show you the cross tab. Here again, you can select uh, what uh, you uh, prefer. For example, you can select age and HCT number and say apply. So you will see age groups. So these three are the uh, possible answer available with these three codes. And then HCT count uh, is a derived question and you got from zero to four in this case. So you, you have from zero to four HCT counted. So the last two rows are total responses and total subjects. And then you see also the total response and total subject by specific uh, um, value code of that question. So in this case, for example, we have uh, an adult patient that had one HCT, uh, 127, for example. Uh, five, six, seven are the patient that had two HCT and are adult. So um, going back to the queue, then you can download, I will download, oh, I can download what we built together in Excel in this case. So when you download, again, you can either select columnar frequency cross tab as I just show you in the view. So it's basically uh, equivalent to what you see in the view. I will just download the columnar. When you uh, download in columnar, you can see uh, in this option. So I would recommend to leave show category code and description. So this means that when you have category question, you will see the value uh, code and the response value in your download. If you select only category code, you will see only the code uh, or the category code, so the code of the value. If you select show category description, you will only see the response value. So I select both and press download. And this is the way to export your data. In this case, I'm exporting it in the Excel uh, format, but you can see you have available uh, CSV and SPSS too. So I hope you won't take too long. Okay, so now uh, I will save it here. It comes up as a zipped folder. I will save it and show that to you. So in the zip folder, you can see two files. One is a kind of a dictionary. I will show you that. Sorry. For some reason. Okay. So it's the dictionary with uh, code, uh, category code, and category value. So this is the code of the question. These are the category uh, codes for that question, and these are the category available from that question. So the response values. So that's just a dictionary that comes together with your download when you download. Then the actual report is this one. So this is the way you see the report. Once again, I explain you the column's name. You see everything in coding. So um, code of the uh, visit number of the cycle, code of the form, number of the cycle, and code of the question. I know that is a bit um, annoying as a view because the results are difficult to read, but in, in reality, having the code in, uh, is, um, from my point of view, is quite good because you don't get confused because the code is unique. Uh, for example, as I showed you before, if you had sex, so written here sex, you 
that could correspond either to the actual question or to the derived question. So it's better to have the actual code so you know exactly where the information is coming from. Then, as I told you before, uh, I selected the option to have code and so value code and response value. So I see to and audit here. If I had only code value, I, uh, I, if I selected only code, I would have seen only two or only description, I would have seen only audit in this case. You might have noticed that the results coming up are much more than what you see in the preview. This is because the preview is currently not working fine. Therefore, um, the is not really, uh, it could be um, that you have uh, no results and then you download it, you have results or uh, you have one line of result and then you download it like in this case and you, okay, so you have more results but this is again a bug that we that well uh, as you will will fix for us hopefully um so uh, i hope uh, you 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 have you understand uh, the format uh, in which he, uh, the data is represented in this export do you have any question about that Okay, so we reached uh, over one hour and a half. Do you have? Do you want to have a break or we just carry on? There's not a lot uh, left to explain, and I have to answer Sandra's question. Guess if any, no one says anything, I will just carry on. Okay. I will just carry on then. So um, I will close this for now. And that's two, okay. Okay, so going back here, to answer Sandra's question, could you explain how would you export age and diagnosis for the first allogenic transplant? So you are saying basically to use a filter to say, uh, I want HCT type to be allogenic. Is that right? Sandra. Okay. Okay, so to explain that, I would um, reuse what we just built together and modify it a bit. So when you know that there is a search available that someone has built for uh, or and only the first allo transplant. Okay, we, we will get that, Sandra, ho hopefully. Okay, so if you, uh, you know that you have some search available, possibly we will build something from uh, um, EBNT too. Uh, also, maybe you built something in the past or your colleagues did and you have access to those, uh, those search. So you want to load a search uh, that it was available. So you click load instead of clicking new search and then you can either run that search or modify that search. When you click on load search, you can find the search using the keywords. And this is where I mentioned, this is what I mentioned before. If you don't save your search with keywords, this won't work. So we note that we saved as a keyword HCT. So I will write HCT here and search. And I see all the search available that have HCT saved in keywords. So in my case, as a private search, I have all of those. Also, there is a, a search at site level in this site, which is this one. Then I note that the one that I just built is HCT underscore PCD. And you can see it's quite useful to have a description because you can check the description here 
also you see who created uh, this search, when was that created, and what is the study, and when this was last modified. Um, well, to say that uh, every time that you build a search, and then let's say you load a search that you build, and then you want to modify it, when you save it, if you um, don't change the name, then you will overwrite an existing search unless you change the name and then you will create a second search. And that's another reason why uh, the public um, search uh, option to share will not be available to everyone because we, we will load some public search and then you can um, open those search, modify those as you prefer and save them as private. So uh, this is why you will have public search available too. Just remember when you load, modify and save with the same name, then you will overwrite the, uh, the search and you will not get any message to tell you that. So you need to be careful on that. Um, so, can I ask you on this, yeah, Sylvia? Sorry, sure. can I ask you, uh, mm -hmm. do you get an error message if you, or no. a warning, a warning if you try no, to warning. overwrite? All right. No, no. Um, you won't get any message. I just said that. Yeah. So you just overwrite it, and uh, the mistake is done. Okay. Uh, um, if it's a yeah. public, uh, will uh, will there be an option to, uh, or the or not the option, the possibility to overwrite something? Because that shouldn't be no. the case. That's that's dangerous. Because anyone can just go and modify a public report. Uh, then, exactly. Because you cannot. Yeah, and that's why not all people will have mm. a public option to share. I because see, okay. unless you have that option available, you will not be able to save as public. Therefore, you will not be able to overwrite a public search. Uh, I understand. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be very careful on that, especially if you are playing with a search from, for example, uh, your site or subject group that you have right to um, overwrite. Um, so you need to be quite careful on that. So in this case, we want to take HCT PS, uh, BCD, the one that uh, we just created, load. And you see when you load it, you see exactly what you created in the four squares. So that's quite useful because uh, if you want to modify anything, you just open that. For example, I don't want to see uh, any more uh, the sex. So I will just remove it from here, for example. And then press OK, and that will be removed. So in what Sandra is asking uh, to see, so Sandra, do you want to see? Uh, in your search, oh, you do subject field the mail. The answer from the question from uh, Simone was, uh, why do you not see mail in the subject filter? You do. I show you that you do here mail. Did I answer your question? Simon? It's a subject filter. Sorry, okay, so what, what is the question? Uh, hello, um, we can't yes. see where your cursor was. Um, I expected to see mail in the little block up uh, beneath uh, subjects. All, beneath subjects, see all sites and all subject groups. And I don't see mail. It, that is in the subject filter here. Okay. I'm yeah. pointing to that yeah. now. Okay. So it's mail yeah, here. Yeah, we have our screen is bigger, so we missed that block. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the fourth. Oh, that, yeah. The fourth. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, so Sandra, what columns do you want to see? You want to see age and diagnosis uh, and transplant type. 
is that right only so i will i will remove sex and i will remove number of hct is that right sandra well i, I will remove them then uh, so sex and age group i will remove them and press OK. So in this time, we will only see number of HACT, HACT type for any of those, and then first primary diagnosis. OK, so you want to see only the HACT type for the very first PHCT. So I will have to remove those two. So in this case, I will only see number of HCT done, primary HCT, primary disease diagnosis, and uh, HCT type for the first block only. Yes, these are the columns. Now we will apply the filter. So this is okay, that's what you will see as columns. Then in the filter, you want to see, so I will remove this filter, and you want to see when HCT type, so I will just write that, sorry. In this case, because you want to, um, you want to see in the first one only, I will have to uh, select pre hct one in visit, then main treatment selection, and then uh, HST type. And then we want that to be all low. Okay. So, I can just say contains again and add. So that's the filter now. So you will only um, see. Yeah. Can I ask you? Uh, yes. You did not specify the cycle for the first pre HCT. Does it not? Does this not mean that it will show all pre HCT? Uh, so uh, the main treatment selection, uh, if um, uh, it doesn't uh, cycle in that case okay so, all right uh then correct me if i'm wrong tunde can you hear me yes um just just give me a second okay so so you're looking at the pre-hst treatment uh, visit right main treatment selection if yes okay just a second Now I'm seeing the question from Sandra. I want to specify if first. Yeah, yeah. sorry, the answer to that. Yeah, that's there's only one cycle in that visit, yeah. so so it's, yeah. it becomes uh, irrelevant because it's always going to be one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tinda, to confirm that. Yeah. Um, Okay. So, so, so to summarize, in in order for you to choose to have to choose a cycle, you have to know that the form is cycling. If it's not, then you don't have to do anything about the cycle option, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's quite helpful to be familiar with the structure of the of the study, so that over time you you get to know which one cycle, which one stone cycle, mm -hmm. um, so that you can leave the cycle out if there's none or if there's only one. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. exactly. Thank yes, you. And, and I think on, on, the, on that stage, it really helps to have the design, uh, um, as I was explaining before, because when you design, uh, you, you can uh, check these things, check if the forms are cycling, check if you are interested in one specific cycle, and therefore write everything down before then you go to this stage, because uh, I, I guess on this stage it's quite useful to exactly know what you're going to do ahead uh, because otherwise you can get confused just looking for things and you won't get an answer here 
you will not get the answer if this is cycling or not from here. So in this case, I will just add OK and try to, to see Sandra's question is, I want to specify if uh, transplant number one is unlaw, then diagnosis one. And if first allo transplant is the second, transplant and diagnosis two. Um, well, uh, Sandra, I don't think we can go to that level of specification, especially not at this stage, if you don't mind. And also, so it, it's not that you can say if something is like that, you see it, uh, otherwise you don't see it. When you select the columns, you will see all columns and then you filter the data on the data filter. But still, each of the filter will apply on single items. So it's not the type of filter, a kind of case when corresponding to the SQL. It's not like that. It's, it's a filter. So it's just, you know, uh, transplant one allo, uh, and then transplant two, whatever it is, for example, you can, add one and then another filter but you cannot say if the answer to the first one is something then show me this or show me that uh, that is not something that you can do with the data report of tool there is more complex uh, and you can only do it with the home page report but again uh, that's something that not all user will have access to well just the EBNT office will have access to that. So if there is a specific uh, report that you really have to run uh, and it's more complex and you cannot use the data reporter tool, then you can discuss that with us. We will try to build something for you. Yeah, I understand, Sandra. I think in SQL too. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, so thank you, Sandra. Uh, so in this case, the first ever allo for a patient at the moment. Okay, because you want to see the first ever, uh, well, that's a good question too. Because we are giving for given that the all these patients have as a first uh, event, so uh, only HSCT, so we are in pre HSCT one. But it could be that the patient had something else in the first block and then a pre HSCT, uh, sorry, the uh, first HSCT in the second block. Therefore, the first, very first HSCT for the patient will be pre HSCT two. At the moment, you cannot do that. Uh, you can use the minimum cycle inside the block, but you cannot use the minimum cycle overall. So that's something that we hope to develop in the future. So in, at the moment, you can only see, for example, in this case, we selected the first pre HCT. So this is valid when the patient had uh, HCT as a first event, therefore we are in block one and therefore we are seeing the pre hct one Yes, Ella, there will be. Yes, Ella, thank you. Yes, there will be. Um, we said that uh, at the beginning of this session. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments. Oh, Shelley. Oh, sorry, that was a question from Shelley, not from Sandra. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Shelley, I hope you an I answered your question for now. So uh, you can use minimum cycle, but not minimum visit in a way. Is that what uh, you're you saying? You can use minimum cycle, but not minimum blocks at the moment. You cannot use minimum uh, okay. or overall minimum. You have to know what block you are looking at. That is valid for minimum and maximum. When you look at the cycles, you're talking inside 
the visit, not inside, uh, uh, not a level, a, a block level, but a visit level at the moment. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, so we change this search, loading a search pre existing, we change it, and now we want to save it again. So I save it, I will change name this time, I will just say one. Uh, I will leave everything for now, but of course you can change everything, you can change keywords, and you can also change again uh, the sharing options, all of them. I want to show you, if I don't unclick this, what will happen when I save. So see, it automatically goes to the queue. Therefore, if you then go to preview, okay, that's the preview, then you modify and then you save it again. So modify, I remove this filter. Okay, and save it again without unclicking that again. Save. On the queue, you will see now both of them. So if you do that multiple times, you will see all of these items with different status here. So it's not convenient. So I wouldn't recommend to run unless you're sure that that is the final um, way you want to see your search. So, was everything clear till now? Do you have any other question? Or maybe I didn't specify this better. So when you click here, clear, it will clear everything. Then let's say I want to start again, I will have to select and blah, blah. I want to load the search. If I don't specify a keyword, you see all the search that I've done in the past. I load this again. And then you got so clear. I showed you what is that run. I showed you. I, I think I've showed you everything. Yeah. And the refresh button is, as I said, you have to keep refreshing until it comes as complete. And then you can view or download. And then also you can delete from your preview what you don't or cancel to stop some process. So it's cancelled. So you don't. It's not in progress anymore or delete something from, from the past, for example, and it's deleted. Um, is that clear? I will go back to the slides. So um, we were on this slide, step three. So I show you how to build your data search. So do you remember to save? Uh, I show you what a schedule means. So now you can view, download, load and edit your data search. Then, so this slide, um, I have this slide because in case the uh, system wasn't working, you can see here the video, but this video is showing you exactly what I just did. Uh, this was provided by uh, uh, Elsevier. And uh, when I will share these uh, slides with you, we'll have that available on your slides. So I think it's quite convenient to have that because you can play this video and you will see everything we did. So select columns, everything we did. Um, I will pause this now, but um, it's just convenient to have that in slides. Then the following oh story. I don't want to see it now. The following slide is as I mentioned before, I asked Elsevier to explain in better details what is exactly the difference between the data filter and the subject filter. And they answer with this. So the data filter returns only matching data, excluding any non-matching data from the same subject. The subject filter returns all the data from a population of subjects who match the filter anywhere within the subject. So in this example, if you apply a data filter 
that is primary diagnosis contained cells, which is the filter that we applied as a data filter, then what you will see is only plasma cell disorder. You won't see the value in diagnosis two for this patient. So you will only see the diagnosis one. Oh, this is the case when you don't specify diagnosis one only as we did. So let's say you had all available diagnosis selected, then this patient had a plasma cell disorder in diagnosis one and uh, another diagnosis in diagnosis two. Using the data filter, you would see only the plasma cell disorder for this patient. Using the subject filter instead, it will still filtering this subject because in diagnosis one, you have plasma cell disorder. However, you will also see lymphoma, so the second diagnosis. That's what um, LCV explains as the main difference between data filter and subject filter. Then I hope that difference will become a bit more clear uh, when the final uh, data report tool will be developed, because at the moment, as I showed you, there aren't many differences when you're building the filter itself. The, the window looks exactly identical. So, few tips. Always select a study from the drop down list first, otherwise, you will not be able to build your search. To build the search using the full panel, walk from left to right. Make sure you select and add to the columns the correct expected items, what you want to see in your final report. Remember always to add the filter by attribute status, otherwise you will see nothing in your report. When filtering by data response, make sure you don't misspell the answer. Remember, if you're filtering using a category answer, you must use the response value, not the code value. And the dictionary will help with that. I will quickly show you the dictionary in a minute. Then every time you want to modify a filter, as I showed you before, you cannot select and modify, edit the filter. You will have to rebuild a filter and then remove the previous one if it's not longer applicable. Then check the preview to see if the search results uh, are what expected. And before that, checking the preview, I recommend to save. Save with keywords and description, especially keywords to help you loading the research afterward. If you need to share your search, make sure you have permission to share. So uh, depending again on your uh, permission, you can share again in private or subject group of center. To prevent error and waste of time, I definitely recommend to have a design of your data search. Uh, ahead in an Excel file as I did. Then I quickly show you what it could be a dictionary. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So, for example, um, that's that's a dictionary. You see data codes, uh, data names. Uh, you see the category, the value codes. So the, all the values that you can have. You also see, for example, uh, the actual uh, um, response value. So that's quite useful because, if, for example, you can just copy and paste if you have the diction on your side. That's what I would recommend to build your search in the design first using the dictionary. And when you know what you are looking for, then uh, start building the search using uh, the uh, data reporter tool. So I think my presentation is at the end, any question at this stage? I really hope this was helpful. It was the first time that we performed this type of training. Um, 
So it's quite difficult, of course, because uh, to understand uh, what we presented, you need to understand the data structure, macro terminologies, all of these things. Um, so I hope uh, this was helpful. But if you think about any question in the future, just email uh, directly me or you can email the help desk of any, or any of my colleagues. And we will answer as soon as we can. If you don't have any question now. So if you don't have any question, I guess we can go to the end of the presentation. So thank you, thank you all. I hope this um, this was useful to everybody. Thank you all. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay. So we can stop recording. Th thank you all.